For this video, we will be discussing what an election configuration is. So, what is an electron configuration? This is a representation of the arrangement of electrons distributed among the orbital shells and subshells. Okay, so why do we need to know the electron configuration? It helps us in predicting how atoms will join together or how they would be forming bonds with other elements okay, or with other atoms. So, we need this so that we could further understand your chemical bonding, which we will be discussing in another video. Now, where could we find the electrons? Okay, at any point in time, an electron can be anywhere, but it's probably contained somewhere in the volume described by its orbital shape or its atomic orbital. Okay, so an electron would be moving around or moving between the orbitals by simply absorbing or emitting a packet or quantum of energy. Okay, so if we, if we are going to draw now an electron or your atom, this is not the, or this is the usual way we draw your electrons or your atoms, okay? But in reality, this is how your atom would look like. And where do you see your electrons? It is somewhere here, okay? So we could not um, easily pinpoint the exact location of your electrons, okay? So... Your electrons are found in your atomic orbitals, okay? Now, we're going to use our quantum numbers to describe electrons in an atom. So, there are actually four quantum numbers, okay? So, the first three, your N, L, and ML, or M sub L, not your ML as Mobile Legends. So, it actually specify. Um, they specify the particular orbital of interest, okay? Well, the fourth one, the ms or m sub s, it specifies how many electrons can occupy the orbital, okay? So, these letters would be um, representing. We're just using this as symbols, okay? But before we proceed with the different types of your quantum numbers, what is a quantum, okay? So, quantum is um, a natural unit or a packet of energy, charge, angular momentum, or other physical properties, okay? So, ginagamit yon, or we are using that to describe now a physical property, okay? Now, let's have, or let's go to the first quantum number. So, the first type, we have the principal quantum number as represented by small letter n, okay? So, the principal quantum number could be any number between 1 to infinity, okay? So, there are a lot of possible numbers, so the quantum, the principal quantum number specifies the energy of an electron and also the size of the orbital. Okay, so all orbitals that have the same value of n are said to be in the same shell or level. Okay. Now we have your second. We have the angular momentum quantum number. So that's quite a long name. Some references would call this simply as your secondary quantum number, or you could also call this as your azimuthal quantum number, okay? So, we use a small letter L to represent your angular momentum quantum number. So, they specify the shape of an orbital with a particular principal quantum number, okay? So, this actually divides the shells into smaller groups of orbitals called your subshells or your sublevels, okay? So, instead of using numbers, we're going to use now letters. So, we have your SPDF, okay? I believe you're already familiar with the SPDF. So, just a basic recap. So, these are the orbital names that actually stand for the names given to groups of lines originally noted in the spectra of the alkali metals, okay? So, S stands for sharp, P for principal, D for diffuse, and F for fundamental, okay? So, yung S, the S actually looks like a spherical, you know, while the P um, looks more of a polar um, configuration or polar shape, okay? So, pwede natin i-associate yung S sa spherical, as, as you could see here. So, you have here um, one round shape, then for the P, uh, it's like a dumbbell. And then for the D and F, um, it's a more complicated shape, okay? So we have the SPDF. Now next we have, next type, we have your magnetic quantum number or the ML. 
or m sub l, okay? So, this could be negative 1 to 0 and positive 1, okay? So, this actually specifies the orientation in space of an orbital of a given energy and shape, okay? So, this actually divides now the subshell into individual orbitals which hold the electrons, okay? So, your S subshell has only one orbital. The P subshell would have um, three, okay? Your D would have five and your F would have seven, okay? So, yun yung ano natin. So, those are the different um, magnetic quantum numbers. So, the three P orbitals are aligned along the perpendicular axis. So, for example, here, where do you, where could you see your electron? So, um, it could be found here in your um, X. So, this is your P sub X. So, pwedeng somewhere here. Then, also somewhere here. So, side na to. Then, you have this one. Okay. So, next, next type, we have your spin quantum number or MS or M sub S. So, it could be a positive one half or a negative one half. Okay. So, it specifies the orientation of the spin axis of an electron. So, imagine the Earth spinning around on its own axis. So, your electrons would also have the same. So, an electron can spin in only one of the two directions. So, positive one-half or negative one-half. Okay? So, sometimes it is called as your up or down. In summary, these are the properties of your quantum numbers. So, your principal quantum number determines the energy, angular momentum, the shape, the magnetic quantum number, the orientation, and the spin, it describes the electron spin or the magnetic moment of your electrons, okay? So, another way of viewing your electrons or in visualizing the location of your so, we could also summarize the number of electrons or the location of the electrons by using this table. So, you have here the energy levels. You have 1, 2, 3, 4 sublevels, the number of orbitals in the sublevel, and the maximum number of electrons in that sublevel. Okay? So, for energy level 1, your sublevel is only S. Okay? And it has one orbital, okay? So, in each orbital, you could only have two electrons, okay? So, for energy level one, there is only two electrons, okay? So, the maximum number of electrons in that energy level is two. Now, for energy level two, you have two sublevels. You have the S and the P. So, for S, you only have, again, one orbital, then for P, you have 3, as we mentioned a while ago, okay? So, sabi natin, it could only have 2 electrons. So, 2 times 3, we have 6, okay? So, we add this 2, your maximum number for energy level 2 is 8, okay? Now, for energy level 3, we're just going to do the same, but we add now D sublevel. So, you have 5 orbitals in that, times 2, you have 10. So, adding this up, you have now 18 electrons for energy level uh, energy level 3. Then, for 4, energy level 4, we include now the F sublevel. So, we have 7 orbitals in that sublevel. And then, you multiply the 2, you have 14. Okay? So, for the energy level 4, you have 32 electrons in that energy level. Okay? So, here we have your periodic table. So, we're going to discuss the different parts. So, first, we have the row. So, there. So, there are row numbers. So, they actually tell you the number of shells present in your element. Then, you also have your group number or the family number. So, these represent the number of valence electrons or the electrons in the outermost shell of your uh, element. Okay. Now, we have the S block. This one, you have the P block, and then the D block, and the F block, okay? And um, an exemption is your helium. So, this one is found, or it is, um, you have the S block for that, okay? So, this one is actually your electron filling pattern. So, electrons actually fill up energy levels in a predictable manner, okay? So, this is the pattern, okay? So, it goes from 1S2... 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 
uh, 3P6, 4S2, etc. Okay, now you don't need to memorize this because this is found in your periodic table. So if you are using your modern periodic tables already in your cell phone gadgets, in your cell phones, your gadgets, um, this is already available once you click an element. Okay, so if you know the election configuration, you could actually add all the superscripts to identify now the number of electrons. Okay? Now, once you know the number of electrons, you could already know the element because the number of electrons would give you the atomic number. And then you could trace now what is that unknown element. Okay? So that is our pattern. Now we have here the parts of your election configuration or the name. So the first number actually is the row number or the shell number. Okay, so the possibilities are one to seven because as we mentioned, there are seven rows. Okay, so next the superscript number is the group number. So it gives you the number of valence electrons. Okay, so the possibilities. So for the S, you have one or two. For P, for the P orbital, you have 1 to 6. For D, you have 1 to 10. For F, you have 1 to 14. Okay, so as mentioned in the previous slide, if you add all of these numbers, you're going to, um, you're going to arrive at the number of total electrons, which should give you the atomic number. And then you have the subshell. So the possibilities are S, P, D, or F. Okay. So, what element has an electron configuration of 1s1? So, if you're going to look back at our table, at our periodic table, so you're going to locate your element at row number 1, at the S block, and you look at group number 1, okay? So, that element is actually your hydrogen, okay? So, to practice, you could ask these questions every time you have to write an election configuration. So, for example, you have lithium, okay? So, please bring out your periodic tables with you or if you don't have them, you may download a soft copy available in the internet or you may check the link below, okay? So, lithium, first you find the element on the periodic table, okay? So, the uh, element has the atomic number 3. So, it is located at period number 2. Therefore, it has two shells, okay? So, its group number is actually one, okay? So, are we um, visualizing already? Can we write the election configuration? So, since it belongs to group number one, how many valence electrons does lithium have? So, it would have how many? One, okay? So, the subshell, so at what block can you find your lithium? So, it is found at your S block. So, the final election configuration would be 1s2, 2s1. Okay, so we include now all your period numbers. Okay, not just the one. Okay, so 1s2 because your s could only hold the maximum of two electrons. Okay, now 2s1 because you only have one um, for that subshell. Okay, so if you're going to add now our superscripts, you have 2 plus 1, that's 3. So, our atomic number is 3. Okay? So, sabi natin, as mentioned, the number of electrons would give you the number of, uh, I mean, would give you the atomic number. Okay? Now, let's have another practice. So, for boron, so where do we find boron in our periodic table? So, it has the atomic number 5. And usually, or not usually, but you could actually find that at what row number? It's located at row number 2, therefore it has two shells, and it belongs to group number 3, okay? Now, valence electrons of boron is actually 3, and what subshell? At what subshell can we find your boron? Okay, so it is located at the P block, so our electron configuration for boron would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, okay? So... As you could see, the two S subshells here are already filled in. You have two and two. Say, and then for our P, you only have one. Okay, so we add this up. Two plus two plus one is five. 
So again, so now we have the correct uh, election configuration. Okay? Now, you may use this as your guide for writing your election configuration. Okay? So, but once you get the hang of it, you could easily write your election configuration. Okay? But don't be confused because you could always look at the election filling pattern. Okay? I won't be asking you to memorize that because there's no need to memorize that unless you wanted to do it. So, you are free to do so. Okay? But for me, I only know 1 is 2 up to 2p6. <laughs> Okay, kayo, it's up to you. So, now here are the filling rules for electron orbitals. So, we actually have three. So, first, we have the off book principle. So, the off book principle actually tells us that the electrons are added one at a time to the lowest energy or orbitals available until all electrons of the atom have been accounted for. Okay. So, next, we have the Pauli exclusion principle. So, it tells us that an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons, and to occupy the same orbital, two electrons must spin in opposite directions. Okay, and last rule, we have the Hunt's rule. So, it tells us that electrons occupy equal energy orbitals so that a maximum number of unpaired electron, electrons results. Okay, so in detail, so let's have the first rule. So we have the off bow principle. So here the electrons fill the lowest energy orbitals first. Okay. So you could not skip from 1s to 3s. Okay. So you start with 1s and then you go to 2s, then to 2p, etc. Okay. So it is also known as the lazy tenant rule. Why lazy tenant rule? Diba? If let's say you are looking for an apartment. Or let's say you're looking for a unit in a condominium, you usually look for um, the lowest floor muna. Diba? You start with the first floor, then you start looking at the second floor. So usually we wanted to stay at the lowest part because let's say the elevator um, was shut down or the elevator is not functioning. Diba? It would be easier if you just live at the first floor or the second floor. So it's it's like similar to that, okay? So, the electrons, they wanted to fill the lowest energy orbital first, okay? Next, we have the Pauli exclusion principle. So, this was uh, proposed by Wolfgang Pauli. So, it says, or um, he told us that each orbital can hold two electrons with opposite spin. So, if you could remember one of your quantum numbers, your magnetic spin, so you now have two opposite um, spins. Okay, you have an up and down. So, the symbol is actually um, an arrow. Half arrow dapat yan. Okay? So, only half. So, so, next we have the Hunt's rule. So, the Hunt's rule is also known as the empty bus seat rule. So, see? Let's see the pairing here of your electrons. So, the boxes would represent now the your um, orbital okay so you place within a sub level you place one electron per orbital before pairing them just like in an empty bus okay diba usually you would sit on the available spaces okay you would not sit beside another person if there are a lot of empty chairs available okay Bakit ka makikipaggitan doon sa isa kung marami pa namang available na upuan? Okay? So, on your left, it doesn't follow the Hunt's rule. Okay? So, you distribute first your electrons per orbital before you start pairing them. Okay? Now, how do we write your um, electrons? So, we could actually use the orbital diagram. So, yan yung example natin a while ago. So, you have one square or one box for the S. So, it follows the Hunt's rule. So, you first write the first electron. Next, so for 2S, you have also, obviously, this already filled up. So, you have 8 electrons. So, now for the 2P, you now have how many? Yeah, it follows the Hunt's rule. So, we start filling up all of the boxes before we start pairing them up. Okay, so its electron configuration for oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. So you add the superscripts, you have 4 plus 2 plus 2 is 8 
So, it gives you the atomic number 8. So, you could also write your electron configuration using the longhand configuration. Example, you have your sulfur with the atomic number 16. So, you write everything. So, you have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. Okay? Now, once you add this, 6 plus 2 plus 2, then you have your 2 plus 4. The outermost, these are the valence electrons. Okay? Now, the innermost, Electrons are known as your core electrons, okay? Now, we could also write using your shorthand configuration. So, the core electrons would now represent the electron configuration of your of your noble gases, okay? Where do you find your noble gases? These are, at, these are found at group 8 or your last group, okay? So, these are the most stable. So, they don't have um, free valence electrons. And meaning, they are not um, available for pairing. So, we use them for your shorthand configuration and then we add up your valence electrons. So, you now have neon inside the bracket. Use the symbol and then you have 3s2 and 3p4. Okay? So, those are the different ways of writing your electron configuration. You could use the orbital diagram, the longhand configuration, or the shorthand configuration. Okay? So, I hope everything is clear about electron configuration. So, if you have some questions, you may comment them down below and just wait for my response. Thank you.